Hello Amiga Coders, this is Photon again. Welcome to my ASM school, part 8. And I promised to, um, after I'd explained how the memory works, I would um, modify our tutorial example to show um, a bitmap. And that's what we're going to do now. If you go to the copper, that's Amiga Shift S or Control Shift S to search, and then Amiga S or Control S again to search again. Of course, it won't find it, so you'd have to go to the top of the source, which is Amiga T, and search again. So that's how search works in uh, ASM1. I will uh, scan the ASM1 manu manual uh, to PDF or something. Uh, there is already uh, an uh, an Amiga guide if you uh, if you can stomach those kinds of manuals. There is already an Amiga guide format manual to ASM1 1 1.48. So get that from uh, you can Google the Flame Arrows <coughs> and find it there. Of course, uh, the ASM1 version is much newer and so contains commands that you couldn't type in this older ASM1 version. Okay, here's the uh, carpal list, and if you remember, we started by turning off all the bit planes. Uh, this also has the side effect of turning off all sprites. <coughs> so that means that if we change this to one bit plane now, uh, we might you, mi you might get... Um, the classical uh, sprite bug, namely that if you do not, if you turn on Bitplane DMA and do not uh, turn off Sprite DMA uh, during the vertical blanking, then you will get uh, all kinds of uh, vertical uh, jumping sprites all over the screen in random colors. Um, so this is the simplest modification of our tutorial example, and the effect is is a bit strange, maybe, you'd think. I can see now that my screen is not aligned properly to the center. I'll try to fix that. Anyway, uh, what you saw there in the beginning, what you saw there again, was a red sprite blinking onto the screen. Uh, what happened there was that whatever sprite Sprite DMA was running, was interrupted, and the Sprite DMA is never turned off. That's a lie, actually. What it means is, since you can turn Sprite DMA on and off at will, at any vertical position on the screen, it doesn't work like the other DMA channels, you could say. That means that it's normal for a sprite channel to be turned off and then turned on again in the same frame. Or in the next frame or whatever. So what happens is that the sprite pointers are running rogue until they hit some uh, sprite end word. And likely then the sprite DMA would still be on so that perhaps it would continue to 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 blink these sprites on the screen but um yeah like there so the other blinking that you see is um simply all the chip memory in your amiga scrolling by at a very fast pace so as you can see most of it is most of the memory is cleared but some at the bottom it contains random data well i shouldn't say random it contains code and data and and uh, bitmaps such as, if we click left mouse on, such as this bitmap here. It is annoying that it's not centered. I'll fix that. Uh, da -da 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 display. No, filter. And pull the horizontal position. Minus 39. Okay, um, 
so what you see on the screen here is ASM1, the ASM1 program's allocated bitmap where it draws characters and displays menus and so on using various libraries. Um, it does the same thing that we have done here, namely um, that it turns uh, a few bit planes on. In this case, it sets the mode to high res. We're going to set our mode to low res. And um, and do some other things to, to get this uh, bitmap thing sorted. So what's wrong with this then? Well, you can't just turn bitplane DMA on and expect your picture to appear magically on the screen. What you have to do is you have to point uh, the bitplane pointers to your desired screen or image and um, you have to set the format of the screen, you have to tell it how big it should be, where it should start. This screen starts at hex 2C and ends at hex 1-2C down here. And horizontally it starts at, let's say for the practical purposes of this tutorial, that it starts at the DMA fetch, starts at uh, D8 and ends at uh, D0. Uh, we'll start by mimicking the format because that determines the size of the screen. So we can play around with this a little bit so that you can get the general idea. This is the uh, display window uh, start and it starts vertically at hex 2C and the m with a magical horizontal value of 81. It's not magical. Um, ends at hex 1-2-C. We want to mimic, as I said, the ASM1 screen, but make it low-res. Um, and that's the horizontal uh, right edge of hex 1-C1. Um, we also have to set, as I said, the um, DMA fetch start and stop. The values you see here are the absolutely standard values for any screen on an Amiga. It's a standard definition of a non-overscan workbench screen, for example. It's the, it's the format of the screen that, that you see when you boot up your Amiga or when you boot it into CLI or and so on. If we check that, there shouldn't be any difference because values kind of like these, almost exactly like these, for practical purposes for this tutorial, they are exactly like these. Um, which merely results in our mimicking the, the, the values, uh, well, um, poking uh, the same values into the registers that were there to begin with. So, uh, but we still need to do it because we could come from a workbench overscan screen or something like that. So as you can see, there's there's not much difference. Maybe I think the uh, you can see that the bitmap starts and st uh, starts and stops at our nice little top and bottom one pixel borders, and that might be the effect of the uh, display window register. Let's go through them. This is the top left corner. This is the bottom right corner, and this defines the the, scr the screen as uh, 320 by 256 low res. The low res part is in here. Uh, this is the bit plane control register zero BPL con zero, and it tells Denise uh, what mode to use to interpret the bitplane data. Now, uh, to hide stuff on the screen, you can just shrink this display window. This will not stop the DMA from fetching the actual values. In other words, it will still steal bitplane uh, memory excesses from the bus used by the CPU, so that if you are planning on shrinking the screen substantially, you should also um, 
make these narrower horizontally. <coughs> so in other words, these this start and stop uh, word tells the uh, well DMA chip to uh, when to s start and stop fetching data from the bit planes. Uh, for each scan line, I should say. That's why there's no vertical DMA start and stop. That is instead determined by these values. So this display window vertically decides when DMA is to be turned on or off, bit plane DMA, but not horizontally. Horizontally, you can, so to speak, hide left the left and right margin of a larger <coughs> bitmap horizontally larger hor horizontally and this makes it possible then to for example blit uh, blit 16 by 16 uh, um, blocks in the margin to make a platformer game for example as you scroll right or left you you can blit into the hidden margins and uh, and uh, still uh, well the margins your blitz wouldn't be seen they wouldn't be on screen because you have set the left and right margin to hide um the overshoot okay um let's try this then if we change this to 6c and now we have to calculate we just added hex 40 to 2c so we'll take 1 to c minus hex 40 that's ec um, and this then should shrink the screen vertically as soon as it hits some data in memory and as you can see it's 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 uh, centered in the in the middle there vertical um we can also hide stuff in the um left or right margin similarly i subtracted uh, the hex 40 pixels from the left and right margin now we should have something a little more even smaller so that's your display window the DMA fetched is still 320 pixels wide because the uh, uh, DDF start and stop are still set to these values. Here's how to think about this. As you shrink the window by 16 pixel steps, you should add or subtract 8 pixels. I say a value of 8 from these words. That means that the granularity of these figures is uh, two pixel steps. Since I just subtracted hex 40 from the horizontal uh, display window start and stop, I need to add and subtract hex 20 from these values. Nothing should have changed except perhaps the pace at which um, the random data and memory flashes by. You can see also that something curious uh, has happened, namely that some characters appear stretched. If you look carefully, it's, it'll say dc.w. And, uh, well, that's just a lucky coincidence. Anyway, uh, and those dc.w is from, from this bitmap in memory that it flashes past. Now, what remains is to to set your modulo um, <coughs> what that means is when the bit plane DMA fetch goes from the left margin to the right margin it stops fetching DMA and then it adds to the bit plane pointers a certain value, and that value is called modulo. That's really the simplest way to think about it. What it does is 
it normally it's set to zero if you have non interleaved bitmaps as the name goes however it can be used for effects i'm sure you've seen the um effects where uh, bitmaps are stretched vertically only in some uh, sine wave or some other thing in some old demo this was popular and uh, that's done by um, setting the modulo to skip lines or repeat lines respectively if you repeat uh, if you repeat the previous uh, pixel line then of course you have stretched that pixel line to be two pixels high with the same data so that means since the uh, modulo is added to the bitplane pointers a negative modulo in this case then uh, the dma will jump back in memory to the previous line and repeat that and if you add to the modulo you will shrink the picture so that if you add uh, if you skip a line uh, then of course the line in between the first and the third line will not be shown uh, pixel line 1 and 3 will be shown pixel line 1 at posi vertical position 1 and pixel line 3 at vertical position 2 so that means that you have shrunk uh, the image vertically um, and these are the registers then I'll set these to 0 and we can uh, have fun with them later but this is to no avail unless we set the bitplane pointers and this requires us to define a screen now you can th you can do this either way if you're more comfortable with allocating memory and so on then feel free to do that the simplest way to allocate memory is to go somewhere in your code that you know is in chip memory and you define a screen and you want to um, I'm going to teach you, you can either type block, I think it's it's more logical, um, or you can um, use declare block, which I guess is equally, equally uh, understandable. And you tell it as you did with the declaring uh, single bytes and words and so on. For this block you also specify a size. and I'm going to go with uh, words because I think it's simpler to think about uh, words in the bitmap than bytes, for example. We know that a screen is a certain amount of bytes and we have to calculate how many bytes that is and allocate that many bytes. So again, apologize for the uh, Windows emulator bug. It doesn't clear the screen when you press escape. Anyway, uh, you calculate string 20 by 256 with a proper that's how many pixels it is one pixel in one bit plane equals one bit and that's why they're called bit planes so that eight bits correspond to uh, one byte that means that one byte corresponds to eight pixels in one bit plane and the bit planes are then layered and combined to look up palette colors again I start ranting but uh, either way this is the size of, of our bit plane that we are going to allocate um, and in words well we can just type that 10k divided by 2 you could also of course do it in a very nice way, set width to 320, height to 256. Um, and um, for lack of, of a rigorous name, width times height divided by 8. 
if you then wanted to um, but here's an important thing here's the size we want to declare block of words and that's why we divide by two because each word is two bytes this is uh, exactly equal to this so let's keep it that way but then we have to remember to put it at an e uneven address so I like to put constants at the top maybe you do too there and uh, if we want to uh, change the width and height now then we will uh, allocate more or less memory down here now this doesn't change anything this just uh, reserves a bit of memory for for our screen and that's thanks to the assembler um, so that if you write this as an executable then it will include 10,240 zeros in the executable and you'd have to compress that away to get the uh, executable to be of a reasonable size what I instead like to do is I've shown you the correct way now I'll show you the bad way let's remove this and set a constant here and to do this I have to check my little utility chip map now when you start your Amiga uh, your the programs that you're using in your startup sequence are loaded and each of them allocate a bit of chip memory perhaps most of them uh, allocate most of their memory in, in your uh, fast memory and in any way um, the operating system has fragmented the chip memory a little bit in the very low parts but from this address and up uh, all the memory is unused if it's unused and we're not running a program in the background then we can of course use it without allocating it and I think this is a very simple way to to get rid of all the hassle and it also saves some loading of uh, binary files if you are to include large bitmaps and so on you don't want to do that every time you assemble instead you just put them somewhere high in memory such as this address and that makes it that much simple simpler to just put in some statements here instead of writing a loop that pokes some declarations for the bit plane pointers in the in the copper list either way I will make a label um, like this and um, and go with our single bit plane pointer for now and we know that we have to declare two words because the copper can only set a word at a time so that this is the high word of the hex 6000 address and that's six and the dollar sign is of course unnecessary but um, and this is l the low part and this is, is a very simple way to 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 just start getting some bit plane pointers in there in your copper list so as we do this nothing should have happened except that the pic the picture could be random it could be completely blank but at least it should be stable because that's because and we should of course restore these values to their original value so that we get a size of the screen that matches our declaration up here and that's it I'm gonna save this temporarily here well luckily the screen was already cleared for us now wha what happens if we uh, move something into this uh, this area well let's try it we can do this as soon as we've turned off the system before the main loop and we're gonna call this hardware init perhaps 
and we're going to do it before it sets the copper. And we can just move some random data to the first word, long word of the screen, and it should display. It does not. Well, one thing that you should think about is to not enable um, Bitcoin DMA until you've set the Bitcoin pointers. So let's do that. And if we want to be proper, we could actually do this somewhere down here. Oh, here we go. There we go, and there's our little uh, long word in the top left corner of the screen. Uh, now the, the, the Windows emulator, of course, shows a uh, 360 wide screen, so that there is some stuff to the left of it. But anyway, that's that's how you do it. Um, now, to go from this to clear the screen, it's perhaps an exercise for another tutorial. Um, because what we really want to do is to fill it with some pattern perhaps so that we see how it works and uh, well we could for example just fill it with random values and this in in introduces some new uh, instructions um, I'll use A1 is it free? yes reasonably and um, we want to poke it with random bytes so that we should have a counter in the um, uh, let's say d0 register that corresponds to Bitcoin size minus one since it counts uh, DBF countdown to minus one and um, we should move a random value into um, into whatever address this register points to. Now it looks like this. Do it like this, the horizontal uh, position of the raster. It's reasonably random. And um, do like this and this simply what this does is put move this byte contained read from the custom chip register into whatever address a1 is pointing to and then increasing the a1 register to the next byte in the screen uh, and that should fill our screen can we move this Well, that's sort of worked. However, I might have noted that when I used my stock D7 register, it repeated just a few times. So anyway, the, this fills the screen with uh, reasonably random garbage, and th this explains how to s start a bitmap. I'll end by cleaning this up a little bit. Um, instead of hard coding your values here you could do it like this I hope this works not all ASM1 dialects uh, or versions support this we want to take screen shift it down by 16 bits so that we get the high word into the low word which we are declaring and we want to mask that with hex FFFF to make sure there are no mm, calculation mm, side effects like this. Let's assemble that and see, see that it works. And we can simply copy this line and not shift it down, just mask it by 
by uh, 65,535, or I should say the maximum value that a word can hold that works to mask out all the one bits in the low word and no other bits in the result of the calculation. And this gives the same result. Uh, now, turning off the sprite DMA is uh, a subject that takes us into the realm of waiting correctly for the raster. Up till now, we've uh, pretty much stayed within safe limits, that is, vertical values that are higher than hex 39 or 38, depending on you s how you view it and less than or equal to hex FF. And that has said uh, saved our bacon thus far. However, in the next tutorial, uh, which I hope will be shorter th than this, because you never know, uh, I will show, the, show you the, the correct way to wait for any vertical position on the screen. And this is necessary in order to um, set turn off the sprite DMA at the correct vertical position, namely in the vertical blank uh, section. So see you then and uh, play around a little bit. Maybe you could uh, fill this uh, random, replace this random data, semi-random data with um, uh, some generated bits that you are thinking out of formula for. One final note, and that is palette colors. Now, as long as we have one bit plane on, uh, things are simple. Where bits are zero, it will look up palette color zero, which is this register, so that whatever this is set to on any part of the screen, that's the color the zero bits in the bit plane get. The one bits correspond to palette color uh, one, which is two addresses up, and in this case, the color of the one bits get the same color that that palette register was last set to, and the last program to set it was ASM1, and that's why um, this color matches your current color. But you might want to improve on that a little bit. I'm not sure I can do that. I'm pretty sure I'll I'll get just coder colors out. Um, and um, that's, uh, you simply add two to the base register for the palette and um, set it to whatever you want. For example, if we set it to zero, we get RGB uh, zero, we get black pixels. If we set it to hex FFF, we get white pixels. Um, we might want a lighter color blue or well, I don't know. You can set it to whatever you want. Uh, no, that's probably it. like this, maybe. Well, sort of, kind of, a bit boring. Let's increase this. It's the green component. Well, maybe. Well, you can play around with this and see you in the next part. <laughs>